Being a, an Iyengar Yogi student has helped me uh, in so many difficult situations in my own life. I think to know that one really can do anything one wants to do, whether it is a passion, an artist, or a poet, or a dancer, or a doctor, whatever it is, to have the passion to do that and to be able to have the good health to do it is a grace. It's the gift of grace. Probably working in the medical profession, having finished with geriatrics and so on, I wanted to do my doctoral dissertation in arthritis of the hands. Because once again, to me, if hands, which are used for expression and life chores and everything have a problem, it is a loss of dignity not to be able to use the hands and the arms and the active expression, the organs of action, the arms and legs. So I did my doctoral dissertation on arthritis of the hands and finger joints, and I decided I had to learn everything I could about hands and thumbs and fingers, and it was exciting to me because my hands were always with me. And when I teach in the yoga class at Temple and the medical school. The first thing I encourage the students to do is know that they have the ability to have a positive or negative attitude. So attitude is important. In teaching a class, you want to learn. It has to be exciting. You have to be hungry to learn. Everybody, make the music your instrument. I want you to clap your hands. All right. Lift your elbows up. Get tall. Spread your knees apart. Now straighten your leg. Come on. Ah. Now dance. Dance on your tiptoes. Yay. Dance. You got to grab something. Grab your ankles. Yes, come on. Now observe. Which leg do you want to open first? You're going to say something to me, Ben Salvo. You're going to say, well, I might have to do... I might have to have my mind still on my feet. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So if your mind is on your feet then how long do you think you're going to stay here like this until you're going to shrug your shoulders, come up, shrug your shoulders and stand and say, well. Through Dr. G's um, strategies of teaching Iyengar Yoga, I finally understood how to get into positions in, in a good way rather than just stretching my body and putting all my weight on, you know, my knees or, and I was able to get into a better meditative state because my mind wasn't thinking about how, oh, my knees hurt or, oh, my elbows hurt or what am I, I can't do this, I can't do this because Dr. G would show us how to evenly distribute your weight and before I knew it, in a lot of positions, I was reaching further. I remember I was working with him in the medical class once, 
with this lovely Indian famous movie star, Lalita Pavar. And she spoke no English and I spoke no Hindi. And then he said, here, you'll get along very well with this social lady from Philadelphia. He said it in Hindi. And she was a very famous Indian actress who played character roles. And she had a, she wanted to do Padmas and she wanted to do Lotus Pose before she died. She had very bad arthritic knees. So Ms. Reinger said, well, he said, you want to learn about knees, you work with her. And I thought, hmm. And I worked with her and I saw some of the things he did and she would scream and he would say something to her in Hindi. And then one day he said, you want to work here, show. And he put her down on the floor and I have a picture of this. And he said, put your finger there. And I did. He said, screaming, that that's not the way to do it. If you don't know what you're doing, why are you trying to help this woman or hurt her? We do not treat people like animals here. And I looked at him and I said, why don't you show me how to do it? And he did. But to do that, to say, look, I want to do it right. He took the time to show me as long as it wasn't hold this and don't move. It was something that he could explain like that. If you got it, fine. You didn't get it. Art historians at colleges spend a lot of time gesticulating in front of slides of, of people's paintings, but it doesn't tell them at all what painting is. So, and, and not only that, but when you go to a museum and you see an array of finished so-called important works of art, that doesn't have much to do with what they're really about either. <laughs> but if you start to paint yourself, now you find out where, how, how closely you locate to what painters ultimately come to when they start to invent things of their own. There's a, there's a whole world of common human experiences, things that we share together, and we can talk about it and have ideas, but there's one thing that takes place in each of us that cannot be shared with anyone else, and that's the connection that all of these things have through us. That what what I, I've made, I don't know how many pieces of sculpture I've made, but I'm the only one that knows what that is. And as, as much as I thought that, that I, I could expose other people to, to what that is, I, you can't do it. You can show them the things, but it doesn't tell them what, what that is. Not enough to help from the heart. You have to know the application of the pose. And this is, to me, what's the beauty of real yoga, the art of healing, that you can heal, but you have to feel. Meaning, if your toe hurts, not to look at the rest of the foot or the toes or the other foot, is to eliminate the other side, is to make it unknown. So to bring the unknown, the other side, to the known which hurts. Maybe the knee hurts. Why doesn't anyone ever look at the other knee or the other elbow or the other hip? Because it's balance. And we can talk about symmetry and balance. Because we are human beings and we have our own rhythm and our own music, we find that when that rhythm is interrupted by sickness or something. I've had that with a hip problem and I asked Mr. Ayinger if he could help me. Yes, of course, come to Pune. And he did. And I was very fortunate to have his application of yoga through him. I never asked him, what are you doing? Resist me and your ribs will be broken. If you resist me, I can't do my work. And Mr. Iyengar has never done anything unethical or inappropriate in his medical application of the subject, which is what makes the man such a genius. The body, which is the capital, has to be conquered so that the mind 
is completely freed from the attachment of the body and get itself attached to the self. Today, I am going to show the asanas and pranayama so that each and every part of our body, each and every limb of our body, unless and until they are completely released, because when the body and the mind both are released from the tension, there is ultimate freedom, because I live eternally in the present. All I did was find out who they were, which was different than anybody else. And that's why we, we don't make a fuss over the people who follow in anything. We make a fuss over the people who find. In other words, wow. what, what, and it's what Iyengar is about. It's what he does that no one else has ever done before. And it's the same thing when, when, when you look at somebody's sculpture. It shouldn't remind you of anything because it is what it is. It's not reminiscent of anything. Sometimes you'll see uh, an inspired quote, an inspired piece where they may have had an experience which then shows up somehow. But for the most part, when you look at a body of work done by anybody, a writer or a composer or a painter or a sculptor or anything like that, it, it, it'll have a character which is unique to that individual. As a matter of fact, that notion of efficiency is based on our health. When we go to a doctor because we don't feel right, he goes through all of the gyrations that are necessary to find out if your temperature is close to what it, quote, should be, or if your blood pressure, quote, is close to what it should be. And when it isn't, we're away from the efficient notion of living. He was so impressed with how Mr. Iyengar demonstrated his knowledge of the self, of the body, the mind, and the spirit. He couldn't believe that somebody could do that. And later, he was so inspired that he said he would commit, he would do a, a work in tribute to the masterful use of person using his person and demonstrating this incredible art of yoga, of healing, of doing everything the body was capable of doing.